Hello everybody, this is Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dansfish.com. I want to talk to you about something today that I think is important, and I'm not sure exactly how to talk about it. I've been thinking about this for a couple weeks. Um, I'm going to talk about the fish from the Congo, why they're expensive, and why I've decided to not bring them in anymore, which is two separate things, kind of. I've been trying to figure out the right way to, to explain this, I think it's important that people know what's going on in the aquarium fish industry, but I also don't want to bash the aquarium fish industry because I'm a part of that industry. Um, but I've n I haven't come to any real like, well, we'll do it this way or this way. So what I thought I would end up doing is just sitting down and talking sincerely with you. So the first thing I want to talk about is fish from the Congo, why they're expensive and hard to get. And then I'm going to share my experience bringing them in and why I've decided I just, for now, am going to stop doing it. A couple reasons they're hard to find and when you can, they're pretty expensive. Number one is often they're from regions that are difficult to get to. They're just far flung and it's hard to get to those places to collect the fish. That's one reason. Second reason is the Congo's not super stable. There's, they just got over a, a years long war wars and they're still kind of recovering from that there's still a lot of uh, bands of folks that are armored and uh, dangerous and so when you go out to these far-flung areas to collect the fish it's pretty dangerous so it's hard to get to the fish to collect them so that's reason number one reason number two is there isn't a really sophisticated supply chain set up there aren't sophisticated facilities where the fish can be taken and it's not like uh, when you go to Asia for example they have all these facilities and all this modern equipment to take care of the fish and to efficiently pack the fish and get them to the industry. Um, the Congo does not have that. They're, they're doing their best just with the, the few resources that they have available. So that's the second reason. And the third reason is a lack of expertise, a lack of knowing and I, I hesitate to say that because I don't want to say that maybe there are true experts in the Congo, but so far the folks I've worked with, I haven't found someone who knows how to do it in a way that is uh, appropriate for the fish, that treats the fish in a way that they're going to have a decent experience. So there's lack of expertise in making that happen, I suppose would be the ways I would describe it. So they're hard to get, it's dangerous to get them, and when they can get them, they don't have the the modern infrastructure, all that fancy equipment that they have in Asia and other places to get the fish processed and sent out. So I, I think that's fair to say those three things. I've been trying though for years to bring fish in from that region. I have brought fish in from that region because I love them. They're amazing. They're some of the most beautiful tetras in the world. They're some of the most unique killifish. Um, the butterfly barb, that is just a beautiful, tiny little dwarf peaceful barb that is fantastic. There's all kinds of wonderful fish from that region. So I've tried and tried and tried. Let me tell you about my latest experience. And I have some notes here because I want to get the dates right and things. So um, the latest supplier I've tried, and I've tried several, I first placed an order in September of 2022. And the package arrived and they did a great job. The fish were actually packaged in clean water. They were not overcrowded in the bags. Everything looked great. And then I started looking at the fish. The fish were not great. The fish were completely emaciated. They were all head, as we say in the industry, meaning that they had been without food so long that their body had lost so much weight that they had a head and then like a tadpole tail sticking out basically. Instead of like a robust body, they were just severely malnourished. Their body condition was in, in, in horrible shape. So packaged great, nice clean water, not overcrowded, all that stuff that we usually harp on and that I had checked with the supplier carefully about was done properly. But the fish themselves had been treated poorly. They hadn't been given what they needed to thrive. And by the way, it takes a long time for a fish to lose body weight. They're a cold-blooded animal, so they don't use energy to keep their body warm. They don't have big brains, so they aren't powering this com big computer that makes us want to eat three times a day. And they're neutrally buoyant in the water, so they aren't fighting gravity like we are here on land. So their nutrition requirements are pretty 
slim compared to a warm-blooded mammal like us, it takes a long time for them to lose a bunch of weight like that. So that was pretty disheartening. So after that experience, I decided not to work with that supplier again. But they reached out in April of 2023 and asked me, what were your impressions of that shipment? How did everything go? And I responded and said, well, your packaging was perfect. I thought you did an amazing job, but the fish were severely emaciated. They hadn't been fed and I can't continue to do business with you because that would go against my mission here at Dance Fish. What we're trying to do is create a kinder, gentler fish industry where the fish are treated with respect and they get to you in robust condition and good health and all that. And we want them to experience that at all steps of the supply chain. And uh, it just explained, we can't continue doing business with you, sorry. Well, they responded and they said, yes, we didn't do it right. We've had a, we had a lot of problems. We've learned since then. Now we know how to make it so the fish are, you know, fat and sassy and healthy. And uh, here's the changes we've made. And we went back and forth and it really seemed like they had got their, their act together. And so I said, okay, well, you seem like you're really trying hard. And I will work with suppliers um, if they try and make improvements and things. And so we did another order. And that order uh, was placed in August 1st of this year. And I was really excited and Johnny was really excited. We're like, finally, we found someone who's willing to do this right. Well, the order arrived and it was the same story. They were packaged in really nicely. They were not overcrowded. The water was nice and clean, but the fish themselves were severely emaciated. And here's some pictures. I took some pictures, we'll show them now, um, of these fish when they first arrived. So as you can see, a lot of them just have no body weight whatsoever. So that was it. I don't know of a way to get fish from the Congo to us so I can sell them to you that have been treated in a way that I can be part of. I guess that's the bottom line. Um, just right now, dealing with that would be contrary to our mission. What needs to happen, what I hope happens, is someone does step up in that area and treats the fish properly so I can try again. Right now, I just, I don't think that's happening. So, as you can see from those pictures that we just showed, I mean, that's the shape the fish come in. It's taken us, I don't know, a couple months to get them healthy enough that we're like, okay, I think we can start selling these. In fact, why don't I take you now and show you what they look like now? Let's, let's do that real quick. I haven't done it this way in a while. Let's just, you know, this is like the old fashioned tours we used to do. Um, but here's a tank. Those are Congo Tetras, probably what they call the green type two, which is a different location, kind of different color form. And then we've also got these neat little African pencil fish and the males get nice bright red on them. But look how fat they are now. Right, that's, that's a couple months of really hard work, medicating and feeding um, to get them to that point. So these are the red brachardi. As you can see, they're really starting to get those nice red fins in that trident tail. Alestopeters, 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 I, I forget how to, how to pronounce the genus all of a sudden. Um, but uh, this is the uh, Brichardi Reds. That is a good looking fish, but look at the body weight compared to where they were at before. Um, so they're doing good. We can, we can sell these now. I think we have some blood cap moon tetras. Yeah. These are such a neat little tetra. There's just nothing quite like these. And there's a few uh, contaminant uh, Phenacogrammus of some kind in there. See that blood cap right up on the dorsal surface by the fin, but, but mainly look at the body weight. Now there's still a couple in there that are kind of skinny, but in general, they've recovered. Got a couple more. Ah. These are some uh, Phenacogrammus arcuatus. Nice body weight on these. I think these are pretty good shape. I see one or two kind of skinny, but, but that's it. And compared to, compared to what they look like, you know, these fish look like earlier, that's not bad. Here's the Mocobile. This is Phenacogramma species from Mocobile. It does not have 
a species name yet that we know. We just know the area was collected. Um, these finally have enough body weight that we've been selling them and they've been doing well. But this took a long time. These were in horrible shape when they came in. And there's still a few in there that we're not gonna sell. But mostly they've recovered. And then here is more of the, um, the green type Congo Tetris. It's a different location, different color form, supposedly. They're, they're doing fairly well. Much better anyway than they were. All right, let me, let me get back to my chair over here. So, a lot of people are asking me to bring in more Congo fish. Um, there's some fantastic species there, including Fantastique. But I just wanted to tell you guys why I can't, and that's why I can't. So we've got those ones healthy, but there were major losses, and that's not something we're into. <laughs> um, and it took, it just takes so long to get them healthy and ready to go. Hopefully a new supplier will come on board eventually that does a good job. But I just want to explain to you guys that are asking for them why we're not going to do it anymore. Yeah. It's just, it's just not something we can be part of for now, but hopefully uh, I, someone has told me that there is a supplier in Europe that gets some uh, fish from that region in. So maybe that's an angle. So there's a few things I guess I can still try, but for now I feel like I've done what I can with what I know at this moment. So anyway, uh, a bit of a serious talk. Usually when I talk to you, I'm chipper and happy and excited about what I'm showing you. Um, but this time is just explaining why we can't fulfill the wishes of some people that want more of these fish in. Oh, and by the way, um, this is going to sound salesy, but just so you know, the ones we have, that's pretty much going to be the last of it since we're not bringing more in. So anyway, um, a little bit different video, but one that I thought was important. I'll sign off now. I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.